the three R's, classes canceled. Your son at birth, he grabbed all hearts. We called him baby boy. Remember when moment to moment, hour to hour, things were for the first time? Birthdays or any days made no matter. He celebrated each and every day. Baby boy wrote stories. In one story, his dog Scotty learned to read and write. He helped baby boy with his homework. Baby boy often said, I don't need any more school. Where's my bike? He held his fork in his fist, his napkin at meal's end, stain free, as unsoiled as he. Baby boy's friends and teachers by bus, car, and foot, safe in the nest of learning, loving and play. Baby boy, class blackboard monitor, erased in the blur of a madman's bullet. Curly-haired Clara, attendance perfect. Here, then gone, in one malevolent moment. Mentors and mentees, 26 in all. Voices still, lives forever abridged. Scotty's waiting on the bedroom floor to help baby boy with his home. All things, oh, I'm sorry, all well, all's well that ends well at the end of this tale, T-A-I-L. Spare a moment for the telling of this tale. Preparing for sleep with my heart awash in sorrow, I heard the words, Jeannie's coming home tomorrow, her ashes are coming home tomorrow, a mantra like counting sheep. Morning's early gleam awoke me from a most implausible and extraordinary dream. Cats don't read, cats don't write. Jeannie has never conversed with me. To further astound, she is quite dead. A few nights ago, Jeannie died in my bed. In my dream, she pushed a letter she was writing to just in front of me. This is my first letter ever. It's to our vet. Please fix it up for me. I read the letter and sighed and said, Jeannie, your letter is unreadable. Your poormanship is all a scribble with many words misspelled. I really don't want to be mean, but there's not a comma period or capital letter to be seen. I will do my very best to fix up this mess. An assisted jump found her in my lap, positioning herself for a nice long nap. Jeannie, wake up. Your letter is done. I think it's as good as it will be. Who reads it, you or me? I don't read so very good. Please read the letter, if you could. Dear doctor, thanks for putting up with him and me. It couldn't have been very easy. Getting so many screech-filled calls, his anxiety level at high C. Before the call was done, your anxiety level was probably at C above high C. Your office was my third home pills to quiet my stomach, and B12 to pep me up, and more pills than many a guy's. That's how I lasted all my nine lives. He was, a, he was very good to me. I guess I owe him a lick or two, and a couple of groomings, but please take note, not for all the pills he jammed down my throat, your friend Jeannie. Then I put the letter in her paw, and this is what I said. Jeannie, your thoughts and feelings are left intact. 
surely as they deserve to be. Together we compose the letter written by you and me. Then an unspoken question arose in me. Maybe, maybe she loves me. Her joy was a very special sight. She looked as if she'd grabbed back one life. She purred and meowed in a duet of delight with her tail in rhythmic flight and said, from now on I will treat you nice when I hear your key in the door. I'm sleeping on my rug in the closet floor. I raise my head and look at you once, but from now on, it will be more like twice. Then she started to sashay away to enjoy a long genie nap. As she took her leave, I heard her, I overheard her say, I'm really sad. If he wasn't so dim, he would know how much I'll always love him. Thank you.